our, our uh, friends, man, mutual friends, uh, has passed away. I'm talking about the legendary Fresh Kid Ice. Uh, he was huge on this no show doubt. many times over the years. Even kind of co-hosted a couple episodes with us. Um, man, can you can you uh, uh, speak on some fond memories of Chris and, and, and what it was like knowing him? I mean, Chris, man, Chris was the was Chris was the you know he was the heart behind the mantra too, man. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as putting everything together, he was the general. You know what I'm saying? Like even before the group came became notorious with Luke Records. I mean, you know, he was doing his thing with the group. He was the founder of the group, you know, then when they was out in LA. So nothing you know, nothing changed. I mean I was doing some spot dates with Disco Rick and um just rocking out on some shows and he was checking me out and seeing how I vibe and he just came to me and asked me, Yo man, you gonna put the group back together So I was like that's that's great. So he was like, "Who's well, interested in putting you in it?" And I was like, "Whoa!" So we went and talked. We, you know, it was like I already we already had a history because we went on the road prior. Because when he put his solo album out, I think it was called The Chinaman. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we got to know each other on tour. That's when he got to see me. And so when he was like interested in putting the group back, he was like, "Okay, we gonna fuck with you." see what you want to do, so, but I mean, just the memories of him, man, making those records, and I had nothing, like, he already had everything, like, what I remember about him is him being so precise, and having the album already sketched out in his head, and everything so organized, you know what I'm saying, like, this the name of the song, this how many joints we gonna do, you know, this what we gonna talk about, this how many verses, you gonna go first. I'm gonna go first, second on this one. You gonna, you gonna have this emotion like he. That was all Chris, you know. So I just basically, you know, I was just a student of the game, soaking it up, you know. Even to, even down to like the performance, he taught me like how to walk in rows and stay in your aisles and different stuff. Man. Like I learned a lot from that guy, man. God bless him, you know. But at the end. We kind of like got into a little dispute because, as you know, they came out with the uh, the Hoochie Mama record, right? Yeah. And um, Two Live Falling Back. But it was like a misunderstanding. I thought the group was getting back together, like, to like go forward. But because one day I was in the studio and uh, they was like, yo, you, got, you heard that new Two Live record? I was like, nah, how you gonna make a two live record? Keep in mind it was still I never knew that they got back to do that record. You follow? Yeah. So I was like, nah, I never heard that record. So it's like bring that record up and I heard that shit thumbs it on the on the I was like, Oh shit. You feel me? <laughs> so I was like, All right, tell Luke, fuck it, I'm going to do a solo album, you know? Because the company was like for years trying to get me like the, the people behind the scenes is like, you should do a solo. But I would never leave the dude who brought me in the game. You follow? That's just that's just how I rock. So for many years, you stay loyal to Chinaman. I stay loyal to him. I stay loyal to yeah. Chinaman. You know, because from the moment we got in and we started doing shows, he would be like, "All right, look." I'm going to go on stage first because nobody know you, you, you know? And I was frustrated because we was doing shows. Like, we went out before, you know, back then, the uh, the material had to catch up with you. You went before the material caught up with you. So I used to go do these shows, and shit, nobody knew who the fuck I was. This this PG, right? I mean, this... this. No, no, you can say up. whatever the fuck, brother. Oh, okay. Like, nobody know who the fuck, knew who the fuck I was, so I'd do my shit. And then I just sit in the crowd in the arena and watch the rest of the show. So once in one year, I think he was in Philly. And I tried to do that shit. And I was like, that go first. <laughs> you know? And I went on stage. And from that moment, he was like, yo, you go on stage first. You know what I'm saying? So people start recognizing me. And then you had people behind the scenes like, yo, I think you should do and in my head, I'm like, yo, why? 
And that's when I really kind of figured out how, how, you know, like the ills of the game and the record companies. You feel me? Like how people think they're just monetizing. They don't really think about loyalty. You, you feel me? So, you know, I never, I never, I never shit it on dude like that. But when they did the record, he explained to me many, many, many years later, like, nah, that wasn't what we was going to do. We was just doing that, and we was going to do this to get the bag. And then you, but how I got it, me being young, I felt like the group was coming back together and didn't nobody tell me shit. You feel me? So, yeah. I mean, it was, a, and you know, then when I went solo, you know, he had his feelings, and then I had my little feelings. But recently, man, before he passed away, man, we had like, the, the best conversations. Like, we used to talk every night, and a lot of shit that we had. I mean, it never was no bullshit. Like, oh, fuck. I mean, we would speak, but it was not like before because I jumped the gun, and he felt like, because I jumped the gun, he had things, you know, he was like, look, I wanted to set you up like this and, and, and bring you in the game like that. And I was like, well, you dropped the record and you went back with your crew. So I thought you, he was like, nah, I was like, well, shit, I didn't know. You feel me? So it's funny how you can have a misunderstanding and that shit can have you on different ways. You feel me? But at the end, before he passed away, man, we used to talk like every night, and we got that clear. I'm glad we had that, you know, we cleared the air, and we got that out. You, you, you feel what I'm saying? That's a beautiful thing, man. Um, man, we used to talk every a- night, man, and he would tell me, you know, you know, because he always was like, school me on the game and things to do, and you know, move in a room like this and, you know, don't hang around certain people. Like, you know, be about your mom, be about your money because, you know, your money is not like their money. And if you hang around these type of people, then they're going to feel like you're a groupie. So he always had my best interest at hand as far as how to move, you know. So, I mean, I miss that dude, man. Like I said before, he got out of here. He told me how to move. Um, check this out. He told me how to move now, and he's not here. <laughs> so he was like, yo, you need to do this. You need he to do planted this. that seed in your mind to, to he help He planted you. that seed, man. He planted that seed. And, you know, it's funny because we would talk, but it's like, you know how you got something you want to say, but you didn't say it? And then I guess huh. it takes time for shit to happen. So when I... It was a while before I really fucked with the social media and shit. So when I came on and started fucking with the social media shit, like, he reached out. And once he seen me working, i never forget one night, man, he seen me working. And he called me. And I was like, yo, what's up? And he was so fucking happy because he seen me working. He was like, yo. And I was like, yo, what's up? And he was like, yo, because he seen I posted something. He really didn't have nothing to say. He was like, you working? And I was like, man, why are you so happy and why he really had nothing to say? You you follow? So Genuinely uh, um, excited to see you doing something, man. That's just the type of guy Chris Yeah, was. man. You know? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. What you said? Yeah, man. It, 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 I can feel the excitement. It's like, yo, he carrying the torch on. And believe it or not, we got so close. I'm gonna put you up on game. We got so close, man. Once we 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 had that little understanding about that disagreement, not the disagreement about the uh, misunderstanding. He was trying to get shit situated to where he could sit down and have a holler and loop and try to because he had left the group again. Well, you know, so he was trying to put the new two live back together. That's unfortunately, you know, the untimely demise. But that that was 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 in his goal was to teach that back to Luke. To do Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. Like, comment, share, 
Also, go over to UGSForLife.com, download the entire archive, and check out new episodes on Apple Podcasts and Blog Talk Radio.